today's video I'm going to be filming insects with a telephoto lens. Typically if you were filming or photographing insects you'd be using a macro lens such as the 90mm macro that I've got but today I'm going to be using a telephoto lens. I'm using the OM 150-400mm lens and I put a 2x teleconverter on it as well and that gives me the equivalent of 2000mm when you include a 2x crop factor on the GH6 and then if you can factor in the pixel to pixel mode you have on that as well which gives you another 1.5 times magnification it gives me 3000 mil to play with I am of course back at one of my favourite spots at this time of year the bee bank at Thameside Nature Reserve in Essex although it's a little bit overcast there's a lot of heat coming from the sun and the sun keeps coming out and the bee bank is absolutely buzzing now it's late March a lot of the insects are waking up First I filmed this nomada bee trying to warm itself up and having a clean. These are nest parasites of the burrowing solitary bees, laying their eggs in the burrows where they will eat the bees young and pollen store. It wasn't long until it had warmed up and flew off. There was also this satellite fly warming itself up on an overhanging gorse branch. These hang around places like this bee bank and will follow female bees back to the burrows as they too, like the nomada bee, are nest parasites. So why use a telephoto like this instead of a macro lens? Well, I can't get quite as close as I get of a macro lens with this, but I can get pretty close when it focuses down to nearly a metre and it's 3000mm equivalent. But the biggest advantage is I am a metre away from the subject. So the bees or the flies, whatever I'm trying to film, are just getting on with their natural behaviour and I'm not disturbing them. I'm not uh, interrupting what they're doing. So I can get some really nice behavioural footage, as you'll see in this video. And I did capture some behaviour. These males are fighting over a female who was caught in the middle of this bundle. Unfortunately, they were mostly obscured as I tried to film them, but I got some footage. The winning male was briefly left to mate with the female, before the others started trying to interrupt again. but they eventually finished and both flew off. So to start off with, I've been, <laughs> a piece has landed on my arm. I've been struggling to film these bees. They're, like, they're landing on me. Anyway, as I was saying, I've been concentrating on filming the bees and I've managed to get some neat behavior. And if you've been watching this channel recently, you'll know that I really like bee flies, so when they turned up they distracted me somewhat. I've managed to get this one taken off. And I even managed to get one in flight hovering. This bee fly was beating its wings, trying to warm itself up so it can fly. Eventually it did warm up enough and took off. There's this one dandelion sat on the top of the bee bank here, and it's been quite popular with the bees, so I've managed to get some footage of them coming in and out. These bees were showing the dandelion the most attention, these smaller bees are also buzzing round. One bee crashed into another. I suspect it was a male trying to grab a mate. I switched to 240 frames per second to try and get some slow motion footage of the bees taking off, slowed down to 10 times. There's a pretty narrow depth of field of what I'm filming today, so I'm having to manual focus. And to help me with that, I'm using this, a focus wheel. And that allows me to adjust my focus a much smaller amount and be a lot more accurate with my depth of field. And that can be really useful when trying to track this velvet mic. You can see here how small they are compared to the bees. It was a bit of a challenge trying to track the three millimeter long arachnids as they crawled across the uneven wall. I got some footage I'm happy with, and some of it looks even better once you slow it down as you can see here. But 
eventually it came too close to focus on. I wrapped up for the day there, but unexpectedly I returned a few days later. Back here again at the bee bank. It's much sunnier than the last day I was here. It was meant to be raining today, so I wasn't even planning on coming out, but it was just too nice to ignore. I've probably got about an hour or two before the sun disappears. I'm just going to crack on and see what else I can film with telephoto lens. I once again found myself filming bees and other inverts on their overhanging gorse branch. There was another Nomada bee, but it was getting a bit of hassle from the burrowing solitary bees. They probably are aware that it's a nest parasite. He had a bit of a clean, and then it was joined by this blue bottle. On the bee bank itself, a queen bubble bee was having a bit of a clean too. Then this wolf spider appeared on the gorse branch. The beauty of using this telephoto zoom, and not a prime lens, is that I can zoom out for shots like this, before zooming in for close-ups like this, all without moving and risking scaring the subject. It was happily basking in the sun, as wolf spiders often do. Nearby on the wall, a drone fly was getting in in its cleaning action, making sure its wings were flight ready, brushing them down with its hairy legs. In the bushes next to the bee bank, I finally managed to film a Clark's mining bee, the same species I'd failed to film on the previous day, other than the one that had landed on my arm of course. You can see at the top of her rear pair of legs, there are her pollen sacs full of yellow pollen. She's collecting the pollen to put in a burrow for her young, but the bee flies, Namada bee, and the satellite fly all hope to sneak their eggs in and use it for their young instead. She seemed to be sorting or arranging the pollen in her pollen sacs to get ready to fly off. I took the opportunity to go in for a full magnification close-up. As she rearranges the pollen with her middle legs, you can see bits of it falling off, which is some pretty neat details considering I'm using a telephoto lens. Eventually she was ready and flew off. I kept an eye on the lone dandelion again to try and get some more bee footage and got this bonus feeding bee fly. Sadly, it refused to turn round. It was a couple of productive days. Safe to say this telephoto setup will be very useful for filming invertebrates this year. Thanks for watching.